Hi, good day. Let us learn about the nervous system. The nervous system integrates and controls the various life processes in the body. The nervous system has two major divisions, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is composed of the brain and the spinal cord. This division of the nervous system is made up of central or interneurons that coordinate and process all the incoming and outgoing impulses. The peripheral nervous system is composed of nerves and ganglia that connects the brain and the spinal cord to the sides of the body. A nerve is a bundle of dendrites and axons. Ganglia are masses of cell bodies of the nerve bundles. Ganglia and nerves are the vast communication network of the peripheral nervous system. Let us discuss first the central nervous system. The central nervous system serves as the main processing center for the entire nervous system. The first component of the central nervous system is the brain. The brain is the largest mass of nervous tissue composed of billions of nerve cells. It is composed of chambers or ventricles filled with cerebrospinal fluid. The brain is divided into three regions, the forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. The forebrain is composed of the cerebrum, thalamus, and hypothalamus. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. It is highly folded. The folds or gyri increase the brain surface area. The cerebrum governs all sensory and motor activities of the body. It is divided into right and left hemispheres, each of which has different functions. The left hemisphere is responsible for verbal and analytic skills and controls the functions and activities of the right side of the body, while the right hemisphere is responsible for creative thought and the functions and activities of the left side of the body. The two hemispheres are connected by a thick band of nerve fibers called corpus callosum. Such connection enables the two hemispheres to function together. The surface of the two hemispheres is divided into four lobes. The parietal lobe is the primary sensory areas. The frontal lobe controls the voluntary movement. The occipital lobe is the association areas for things that are seen. And the temporal lobe is the association area of what is being heard. Thought, learning, and personality are also controlled by the occipital and temporal lobes of the brain. The thalamus acts as the relay center for sensory impulses except the sense of smell. The hypothalamus functions in maintaining homeostasis like maintaining blood pressure, body temperature, feeding activities, emotions, and fight or flight responses. It also serves as a link between the nervous and endocrine systems. The hindbrain is composed of the cerebellum and medulla oblongata. The cerebellum is the part that coordinates all voluntary activities and helps maintain balance. The medulla oblongata is the part of the brain that articulates with the spinal cord through the foramen magnum on one end and with the pons on the other end. The medulla oblongata is the center for regulating cardiovascular functions, breathing, digestion, reflexes, and coordination of movement. The pons is located between the midbrain and the medulla oblongata. It links various parts of the brain serving as the relay center of the medulla and the cerebrum. The midbrain consists of four masses of tissues located between the forebrain and the hindbrain. The upper two masses are involved in visual reflexes and the two lower masses are associated with hearing functions. The midbrain is also responsible in maintaining postural reflexes and motor movements. The next one is called the structure of the spinal cord. The spinal cord is the tubular mass of nervous tissue that is connected to the modula oblongata on the upper end and to the last vertebral bone on the lower end. It is referred to as the continuation or extension of the brain. A cross section of the spinal cord shows the presence of a dark H-shaped region and an outer white region. The white color is attributed to the myelin sheath that serves as the axon that covers the axon of the nerve cells in this region. The dark color is an indication that this region is composed purely of nerve cell bodies and dendrites. At the center of the spinal cord is a hollow space called spinal canal, lined with ependymal cells and filled with cerebrospinal fluid, the same fluid that fills the ventricles of the brain. 
the spinal cord has two important functions to carry information to and from the brain and to govern simple responses called reflexes. Let us proceed now to the second division of the nervous system. This is called the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system consists of nerve outside the brain and a spinal cord that carry impulses from the central nervous system to various parts of the body. There are two main divisions of the peripheral nervous system, the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is associated with the voluntary control of body movements and has two main parts. The spinal nerves carry the motor and sensory signals between the spinal cord and the body, while the cranial nerves are the nerve fibers that carry information into and out of the brainstem. The autonomic nervous system is the system that is associated with the involuntary control of body movements and has two main divisions, the sympathetic and parasympathetic. The sympathetic is activated when the body is in dynamic role or stress. For example, increased heart rate and breathing. While the parasympathetic maintains body functions and restores the body to normal or relaxed mode. If this is your first time watching my videos, make sure you hit the subscriber button. Thank you for watching.